All right, today we're going to be going over all the test functions of the Innova 3320. In case this is the meter that you've decided to purchase and would like to know how to use this meter, maybe you're not that familiar with meters, and that's okay. I'm going to walk you through every setting on here. That being said, my impressions of this meter are not good, especially for the price point. It should be about a seven or an eight dollar meter at most. It's going to be pretty unreliable, and your test results are probably going to be all over the place, making it very confusing to use. I would recommend at this price point something uh, much more durable that you could get is you can get this one from Home Depot. It's just a commercial electric. Should be about the $30 range. Something even better that's even cheaper. I would really recommend this Astro AI AM33D. These both are going to be a lot better options than something like this. Uh, it just it feels cheap. The leads are cheap. Uh, it's not it doesn't have a, a 10 amp fuse connection for for your DC 10 amp. It's got some gimmicky marketing things to it that I really don't like. It seems to be advertised as an automotive specific multimeter and it has a 12 volt battery load test function on it. That is not going to be able to test your car battery in any kind of realistic uh, capacity. A lot of this is just marketing. If, you if you're considering this meter and are on the fence about it, don't get it. If you already have this meter and that's all you have, then let's go through. We'll walk through all of this settings so that if that's all you have then we'll make the best of it so we're going to be going through the wheel let's go ahead and start on this 10 mega ohm input what does that mean well it means that the internal resistance of the meter is going to be at least 10 mega ohms and why is that important to you it's not at all it's a total is just i think for marketing or whatever else but we can see we're reading here about 11 mega ohms so at least they're true to that part of it we know this is a DC voltage measurement because it says DC, but it's also indicated by this solid and dashed line above the V. That's gonna let you know that that's for direct current. So let's get ahead and get up a DC 12 volt source. See what this measurement looks like. Okay, we're showing about 12 volts. Now with DC measurements, we're gonna wanna make sure to use black to black, red to red. That's your lead polarity. If we measure it in the other direction, we're gonna get a negative sign on our meter so that's what the negative sign is indicating is that our polarity is reversed either in our circuit or with our test leads okay coming back 12 volts now let's go ahead and get an ac volt source this meter says it can measure up to 600 volts i wouldn't measure anything above you know whatever is coming out of your outlet maybe 120 i think that's all realistically i would do with this even with that and i don't know if i mentioned this but if you notice out of the box you're having a hard time to get measurements you gotta press these test leads in really hard uh, to get this thing to work which is another indication of poor manufacturing quality okay we're on ac volts take note too of what ports you're plugged into this port's indicating voltage ohms milliamps diode continuity and battery you'll only use this other port for your 10 amp dc measurements it's not capable of doing ac amperage measurements which is pretty common for this price point polarity for your ac measurements isn't going to matter you'll get the same reading either way Way. see that here 120 okay next that's gonna be ohms or resistance got some resistors here now I do like that it's an auto ranging meter that is rare for this price point it's saying this is a 10 ohm resistor Let's see if it can read this one it's just saying this is one mega ohm so I think that I do believe that tracks this next one here is gonna be your alternating current milliamp setting which you can leave your ports both in there for that and this will be your diode setting now with diodes you're going to want to measure them in both directions and your measurement is going to be the voltage drop in millivolts okay Okay, so it does have a decimal there letting you know it's in millivolts, 500 millivolt voltage drop that checks and tracks. Next setting is going to be continuity, and this is going to be an indication of the low quality of this meter and something that you can look out for when you're testing your meters. If you hold your leads together, you should be hearing a constant tone as long as those leads are touching. See, I... I have to really finagle with this thing to get that tone to chirp. Now let's try just measuring a wire. See how inconsistent that is? 
How are you gonna make reliable measurements with the meter when it's doing that? You're not. So that's why I would really recommend against it. Okay, next we're gonna go into these battery load tests. Now per the manufacturer's specifications for the 1.5 volt, it's gonna be a 10 milliamp load. For six volt, it's 100 milliamp. For nine volt, it's 10 milliamp. And for a 12 volt, it's 200 milliamp. So what does that really mean? That means that there are very, very small loads. They're appropriate you know, for this nine and one and a half volt battery, it's gonna be perfect for those guys to, to check to see if they're good. For your car battery, that's not gonna be nearly enough. Let's go ahead and check its function. Red to positive, black to negative. It's coming back good, which I hope so. It's pretty much a brand new battery. Check this nine volt. I don't have a six volt laying around. Again, red to positive, black to negative. Coming back. Now this measurement should be the voltage drop from the load test, if that makes sense. And then we'll go ahead and set it to a 12 volt setting. I've got a 12 volt lithium ion phosphate battery. 200 milliamps to a battery like this is gonna be nothing. I mean, to put it in perspective, this light bulb is two amps. You would have a much better idea of the battery's ability to power a load with just an incandescent bulb than you would with this meter. Okay, our next setting is gonna be for milliamps amps DC. I do have an example set up for that. Now, when we're measuring current or amperage, we need to make sure that we're doing it in series with our circuit. So I'm going to be pulling this red lead out and then I'm going to be using the multimeter as basically a jumper wire as a test lead. Now, polarity is going to be finicky with this as well. I want my red to where the power comes from and my black to where my load is. Okay, 25 milliamps. Pretty cool. Now we also have this 10 amp DC setting. So this will be the only setting that you'll move this port over to. Now keep in mind, this is an unfused, unfused connection. So what does that mean? That means if you're drawing too much power, if you're measuring your current for too long, those leads are most likely gonna start to melt because they're so cheap. And what's sad is you can get a set of really good leads for about $6. And and the manufacturer didn't want to make the investment. But this light bulb is this two amp load that I was talking about earlier. Again, we're gonna make our amperage or current measurement in series with our circuit. So we're using that meter as a jumper wire, but it's not fused. So if you short something out, you could damage something. That's what the fuses in the, in the meter are to prevent you from damaging the equipment that you're measuring. If it has an unfused connection and you short something out with your meter, there's no protection there and you're gonna damage whatever you're trying to measure so keep that in mind when you're doing this stuff okay let's go ahead and check go ahead and check this out you'll notice our circuit's on but our bulb isn't lit because we have to complete the circuit with the meter that's what's going on here cool and we're showing two amps in conclusion, I like that it's auto ranging. That's rare for this price point, but I pretty much don't like anything else about this meter. I'd really recommend not getting it and looking at some others, like I brought up the Astro and the Commercial Electric. There's even other good meters at this price point or lower. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps. If you have any questions about any of the tests or you're having trouble getting your meter going, you know, like I said, make sure you put, you have to really press in these test leads to make good contact. So there you go.